View this video from the playlist to see the complete video content. Still not having any luck? Well then it's time to talk about the final element of timing, which has to do with the left and right position of the hook. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about the gap between the hook and the needle itself. How much space this way as we're in front of the machine is there between the two components? If there is too much of a gap, you will end up skipping stitches because the hook can't catch the loop once again. If there is too little of a gap or the hook is actually hitting or deflecting the needle, then you can end up with a situation where you're damaging the hook point too frequently, creating burrs on it, or you're hearing a popping noise as you sew, and that would be an indication that the hook is too close to the needle. Fortunately, it's completely easy to set the left and right position of the hook relative to the needle. I'm gonna show you that on both machines because the process is different between the red and the blue machine. So if you have the red machine, skip the starting section, move right onto your machine, the LS1. Okay, left and right timing is one of those things that can be done in a number of ways and can be viewed in a number of ways. My technicians here at Sailrite take the machine out of the case so that they can get it laying all the way on its back so that they can get a good view of everything under the machine. Someone who has really, really done a lot of this like I have can do it in the case and can make the adjustments just like this. But to view the timing position and that gap between the hook and the needle, I do agree that it is best to remove the needle plate and to remove the slide plate and to remove the feed dog. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we just use a screwdriver, a long shaft screwdriver works really well to remove the needle plate. I'm not gonna show this process on the red machine in detail because it's the same. Slide plate, the best way to remove it is to lift it up at the front edge and then twist it toward the front and just slide it off. It's very easy to do if you do it that way. Remove the needle plate. And now we wanna get into the feed dog. And the feed dog, there are two screws to the right of it. This one you wanna get good pressure down on it so you're not slipping on the screw heads like I just did there. And then you can generally come in either from the front or the back to get the back one. If one is, is really hard to release, go to the other one, try it. before, And then often when you get one released, then the one that was being stubborn will release easily. Set those aside. And now we can see much better what's going on down in here. So as a matter of fact, we can see so well in here that I can even leave the retaining ring on and I can rotate the flywheel so that the needle goes down and then I can sort of look from this vantage point or from this vantage point and I can see how the, the hook is crossing the needle. You could even remove the feet if you want to in order to make it a little bit easier to see in there. All right, let's make this even a little bit easier to see and actually to feel, which is really the best way to do this. I'm gonna take the, the bobbin case out. I'm gonna pop the retaining ring to pull the hook and the driver out or not the driver, the hook and the retaining ring out. Got my hook, I always make sure my hook point is clean. Uh, then I'm gonna come back, put the, the hook back in the driver, hold it with my finger here to the side, and I'm going to rotate the flywheel until the hook goes back, and then from looking from where I'm looking right now, I can really see it nicely now, let the, the hook go back and then come forward, and when the hook is on the side of the ball of the needle, I can use my index finger here on the axle of the, the hook and I can sort of pull on it and see how much of a gap there is there. And actually, I'm gonna say that this machine has a little bit too much of a gap between the hook and the needle and that should be closed down. So I'm gonna let you get up here from the top and see this and I'm gonna pull on it so you can see that gap and we've got about a 64th of an inch that this needs to be closed down. So we need to move the, the, uh, the driver and the basket to the left. Here, Matt is performing that same test again, looking from the top side on the right side. And here is a view on the left side, performing that same task. Yeah, ready? All right, so 
we need to get, we have too much of a gap by about a 64th of an inch. We need to get rid of that gap. That means we need to move this entire basket that direction in order to close down that, that play that I was just showing you. Now let's talk about how it works on this machine. So basically this is the timing clamp and this screw right here is the screw that holds this entire basket. This basket is connected to this shaft which runs through this boss all the way to this point before this collar. So if I loosen this clamp, I'm loosening not only the shaft underneath, but I'm loosening this entire basket. I can move the whole basket left and right, and I can turn it rotationally. So we need to be careful that if we're happy with the rotational setting of it, that we don't disturb that when we move the basket left and right. So I really wanna to talk to you about the rotation first, then we'll come back, we're gonna loosen this set screw, and we're gonna move the basket off to the left. But before I do that, I also wanna make sure that you check by grabbing the shaft here and moving it left and right that there is barely any play between this collar and uh, the, the basket's right end. This is part of the basket, the shaft here that comes through. So you can see there's barely any play here. That is correct. If you have a lot of play there, it may be because you were in one of the prior segments, you were adjusting the rotation of the driver and you happened to let the driver move to the left a little bit when you changed its rotation that would increase the play here. So you either have to come back and you'd have to push the driver on in order to get rid of the play, or you'd have to move this collar to the left to take that play out, okay? Now we'll go to look at the rotation of the basket. Okay, the rotation of the basket, what that controls is that controls where the needle is in the triangular opening of the retaining ring cap spring, and this is the cap spring again, so that triangular opening. So actually, Eric, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this in the machine with the needle up, and I wanna show that from the top. So if we rotate the flywheel to get the needle down through the cap spring, you can see that on its plane, in other words, this needle, this, the plane running this way, the gap in front of the needle to the cap spring and the gap behind the needle to the cap spring is pretty equal. That would be a correct setting and what, what I wanna do is show you how not to lose that setting when you make the left-right adjustment. So we're gonna remove that cap spring again because we know that the rotation, re, rotational setting of the basket is correct as it is now. So we wanna make sure we don't use, lose it. So we're gonna take our, our Sharpie marker and that oil hole right there is cut right through the shaft that is controlling this basket. So as long as we get that oil hole aligned properly in the same position after we make our setting. So I put a couple of pin marks on it so that when I adjust this, I can make sure that rotationally I have the oil hole lined up with the marks that I made on this cast iron leg, which obviously won't change position. I'm going to loosen the timing clamp with this screw right here. And I wanna loosen it just enough to allow things to slide and sort of note where it was to begin with because I wanna tighten it roughly to that position. So I can start to feel it loosening. And what I wanna do is I wanna check, see, see now I'm able to rotate the basket, see it moving? You can see the oil hole moving on my mark. And what I would do here is probably not loosen it quite that much because what I wanna do is I wanna loosen it and then I wanna slowly wiggle it and pull it to the left to close down our gap. I'm gonna pull it too far to the left because we've already shown you what too open looks like. Let's show you what too closed looks like. So I'm gonna just snug this. I'm not gonna go as tight as it was to begin with. You remember it was roughly at that position when it was all the way tight. And now we're gonna take a look again from the top at the timing. Now you should see it deflect the needle and indeed you can even on the back stroke you can see it. Watch it move the needle out of the way. It's moving it out by about a 64th of an inch. So now we're too tight. See it move it? So I'm hitting the needle with the point of the gib hook just barely but I'm hitting it more than I want to. So I know I've moved it too far to the left. So while you're in that same position, so you can see things moving, I'm gonna loosen the, the timing screw again, and then I'm going to wiggle and move the basket to the right slightly, making sure that I line it up with my mark so that I don't disturb my rotational uh, adjustment of the basket. Come back, apply pressure to the side of the hook. Come here, okay, and now I'm gonna pull on the, the hook a little bit, and notice, now when I pull on the hook, there's no discernible gap between the hook and the ball of the needle. The ball is the portion right below the eye of the needle. 
That's where the needle and the hook make the most contact. No discernible gap. As a matter of fact, it's deflecting just a touch. So I wanna, you wanna get this as close as you can. So I'm gonna loosen it again a little bit and I'm gonna just barely tweak it and move it to the right. Come back, check again. I still see it deflecting slightly. Move, twist and move to the right a little bit. No movement now. I am right on the side of that needle and I'm doing this with a number 20 needle. I probably should have said that to begin with. That is perfect timing right there. Perfect left right timing. Now I'll put my retaining ring in before I tighten things up. Let's just make sure that we're still in the center. And we're a little bit closer to the front, so I need to twist it a little bit forward. I'm gonna do that. Whoops. That looks good, okay. So rotationally, I'm happy. Let's take that out again. This is all about fine tuning. Put the hook back in. Make sure we don't have a gap, which we don't. Timing is perfect. Finally, come back and we remember where this screw was set and we're gonna grab the machine, hold it firmly, and we're gonna tighten that with a good quality screwdriver. And we're gonna make sure that it's right where it was to begin with, if not a little tighter. And that's pretty darn tight there. And we have our left right timing set on the LSZ1 machine. When reinstalling the feed dog on the machine after you're done setting the timing, you'll notice that you can actually pivot the feed dog left and right a bit. So I recommend snugging the screws first, then putting the needle plate on to make sure that the feed dogs are, are square inside the slots. And if they aren't, making tweaking adjustments to the angle before finally tightening the feed dog and then putting the plate on. To check the left and right timing, we need to remove the plates and remove the feed dog in order to get the best view down into the mechanism. So to remove the plate, what the easiest way to do that, the slide plate, is to lift it up and twist it toward you from the front corner until it slides off. To remove the needle plate, simply release these two screws. You'll need a long shaft flathead screwdriver. And the feed dog we release with these two screws. Uh, and if one of the screws is stubborn, go to the other one first. And often when you remove a stubborn or a non-stubborn screw, then the stubborn one will come free much better, especially if you twist the feed dog a little bit to start it. The other thing while I'm taking this off that I wanna point out is that when you put the feed dog back on, make sure that you, you snug the screws first, then put the, the plate on, make sure the feed dog's square in the plate, adjust the feed dog, and then retighten the screws and make sure they're good and snug when you have it nice and square in the, in the needle plate. Now that we, you could also remove the feed if you want to, but I'm not going to here. Now that we have it open, we can actually see through the retaining ring and we can watch the hook come by and we can get some idea as to the approximation of the hook left and right to the needle. But even this isn't the clearest way to see it. The clearest way to see it would be to remove the retaining ring and hold the hook in and look at it. We're gonna do that now. All right, our hook comes free. I always check the point of the hook to make sure that there's no damage there, and there isn't. And then what we'll do is we'll put our hook in, and we're gonna check by rotating the flywheel to see how close, or how, how tight the gap is between the hook and the side of the needle when the hook is at the ball of the needle, the ball being the part be directly below the needle eye, which happens to be the widest part of the needle. And you can see here, there is barely perceptibly a gap between the two. As a matter of fact, they're almost touching. I can tell that by holding the hook and with my right finger just sort of pulling the hook out to the left, my index finger here, pulling the hook out to the left and I can see there's just a tiny amount of a gap there. And we could close that gap down and that process is called left and right timing where we're moving 
the basket left and right, left or right, in order to either open the gap or close the gap that we just noticed. Okay, we really don't need to make an adjustment with this machine, the timing looks pretty good, but um, uh, we could close it down a little bit and if that's the case, the next thing we need to do is we need to put our retaining ring back in because we need to check also to see how the basket rotation is. This whole basket can rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. And what that rotation determines is how the needle goes down through this triangular opening in the cap spring. So this is again, this, this thin metal plate that's curved is the cap spring. There's the triangular opening. And you can see the needle is going down along this plane it is roughly equal distance from the front of the needle to the front of the cap spring and from the back of the needle to the back of the cap spring on that plane. And if that's the case, the rotation of the shuttle or the basket is correct. It is correct in this case. So what we wanna do before we make our left and right adjustments, I'll take the retaining ring out again. And what we wanna do is we want to make sure that we don't lose the rotational orientation of the basket when we make our adjustment. This whole basket is actually a full piece that runs from here all the way to this shaft, all the way to this end that I'm pointing out with the screwdriver. And this part is the timing clamp that holds that entire rotational orientation of the basket. So if I loosen this clamp, I could actually rotate the basket or I could move the basket left and right. Well, we know that the rotation of the basket is correct, so what we wanna do in order to make sure that we don't lose that rotation and don't have to reset it is we wanna take a Sharpie marker and right here at the slit of the timing clamp, we want to mark on the basket shaft. I'm gonna put a good mark there. And what, we'll, what I'll do then is I'll use that mark as a gauge to make sure that when I'm happy with my left and right timing that I'm still lined up with that mark and then my rotational basket set will be correct. Because this is a straight stitch only machine, it's a little bit different than the zigzag machine to move the basket left and right. Just adjusting the timing clamp right now would allow me to move the basket to the left because basically this clamp is forced up against this leg and it's keeping the basket from going this direction. So if I loosen this clamp, I can pull the basket to the left tighten the clamp, get the basket or get the hook closer to the needle, but I'm still gonna be able to move it to the right because this collar over here will then have a gap between the right side of the collar and the cast piece here of the sewing machine. So I'll show you that real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. And we know in order to set the timing perfectly on this machine, we need to move the driver basket to the left. So I'm gonna loosen this, noting where it is to begin with, it's almost vertical because when we come back and tighten it, I want to set it about there again. I'm just going to loosen it enough that I can twist and move this. And you can see when I twist it, see how that mark that we, we made earlier is moving? That's how you can see how I can reset it so it lines up with that to set the basket rotation. But now I can twist and pull this to the left. And notice as I do that, the gap over here has increased. So if I were to move it that much, which is way too much, and snug this down, now I have that much play and the shaft. But if I needed to move it to the left that much, I could, then I just have to loosen the set screws on this collar and slide it up against the cast piece to get rid of the play. And that, in essence, would set my hook way too close to the needle. Let me show you what that looks like right now. I'm not moving the collar, but I'm gonna hold it to the left because I know this isn't right. And I'll show you what it would look like to have the hook crashing into the needle. I'm holding the driver to the left, or the whole hook mechanism to the left, since I don't have the collar moved over, but here you can see, look at the needle coming down. It's deflecting big time, see that? So I knew I was moving it way too far to the left. That would be a case of the hook too far to the left. So obviously we don't want that. So let's go down below now and let's show uh, setting it to the right position, uh, too far to the right position. Okay, so if I wanted to move the entire hook to the right, what I would do, let's go back to where we were set to begin with. So I'm gonna loosen, I know where I was set to begin with because we didn't move this collar. So I just push it to the right, loosen the clamp, kick the clamp to the left to get rid of the play, make sure rotationally I'm set right, and snug the screw. That's where we were set to begin with. Now I don't have it as tight as it should be, but this would set our timing back where it was. But if I needed to move, create a bigger gap, then it's pretty straightforward to see what you would do you would then loosen 
this collar. There are two set screws on it. Slide this collar to the left by however much you wanted to move the hook to the right. That's a huge amount, but I just want to show you what I mean. And now I can move, I can't move it that far because that's too much because I'm hitting metal over here. But I could move it to the right, then push this back to the left in order to set the basket further to the right. So you're using this collar and this clamp as the stops and where they're set according to the fixed pieces of the casting determines the left and right position of the basket. So let's go back and get her exactly where we want her. And I know that I had this set all the way over to the left end. And you don't wanna force the two apart hard. In other words, you don't wanna force this one hard and that one hard that direction because you can create a situation where you create a bind by having those two hard. So I've got a little bit of play left and right. That's what I want. Machine rotates over fine. That's what I want. Now let's check our, let's see where we are. We should be back to roughly where we were to begin with. There's just a touch of a gap and I don't want that touch of a gap that we talked about to begin with. So I'm gonna, we need to move this one to the right so I can pull the basket out. So I'm gonna loosen this and I'm gonna wiggle and pull the basket to the left just a little bit to create a little bit of gap here. I may have gone too far with that, so, but, it's, but I'm gonna work it out from this end. So now I've created enough that I can pull it out a little bit. You can see I can pull it out just a little bit more to the left. And now I'm gonna loosen the collar, move it to the right to get rid of that play. Play's gone. Let's see if we've gone too far. Yep, we're deflecting a little bit now. Not as badly as we were last time, but we're still deflecting a little bit. So I need to loosen this, move this a little bit to the left. Create, ooh, that's a lot. We're talking very minute amounts of play here. Yep. There we go. There's just a touch of play. Now I'm gonna loosen this one, slide this out, slide this out. So I'm using my screwdriver to force this to the left and then I'm forcing the basket to the right, lining up my marker, snug that. Now there's no play down here. And let's look at this. No deflection and no gap at all. Spot on. No movement, if I pull it with my finger, no gap between the two, no deflection of the needle, it is just right beside the needle. I'm doing this with the number 20 needle in the machine, which is what you should do timing with. I'm gonna put my retaining ring in, and it looks like I lost a little bit of my rotation. That's easy to fix, let me show you that. Notice I'm too close to the front. Too, too much of a gap at the back. So I need to rotate the entire basket counterclockwise, but I don't want to add any more play into the unit. Now we know we like our timing, so I'm going to tighten these up. There's one. There's two. Okay, now I'm going to loosen this. Oh yeah, I can see my pen mark. I needed to go that way. Okay, there we go. Let's check it again. There's our gap. Now we're in the center. And we know we have our left and right timing right. So we come back. And remember this was pretty much vertical. And we're going to retighten that so that it won't slip. And everything is tight, no play in the shaft. Rotational, rotation of the basket is right, left, right, timing is right, and we're good to go. Left and right and rotational basket timing on the Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine is a little more complicated than it is on the blue machine because you have two points that require setting in order to hit the left and right position. However, as a result of those two points, it almost never slips. So I know we went through this because it's part of timing, but I would find it extremely rare for somebody to have to set the left and right timing on an LS1 sewing machine.